Have you noticed that there's been a growing sense of animosity towards esports? There's been a growing consensus all across the internet that esports is responsible for gaming's downturn. Though this attack on esports seems to be everywhere nowadays, all of this targeted criticism was spurred on within the last few years. Seeing all of this made me feel, well, incredibly concerned. For context, I am someone who cares deeply about esports. My main game of choice was, surprisingly, Overwatch, and I've dedicated a lot of time to it. I've played for my college's varsity team, I've partaken in community tournaments, tournaments for years, and I've dedicated many, many hours of rank. My best experiences in gaming came from esports. My closest friendships came from esports. My desire to create this very channel came from my love of esports. Because of the passion that I feel for competition in gaming, I felt confused as to why people hate the medium of esports so much. From my perspective, esports seems like something that was, I don't know, harmless. After seeing the multi-pronged attack on esports, I wonder if my perspective was somehow flawed. I began to ask myself many things. What makes people feel this way about esports? Why is all the criticism being expressed now? And, most importantly, is esports problematic in the greater space of gaming? After mulling over these questions for a long while, I think they have sufficient answers for each of these questions. If you're short on time and want my quick and dirty explanation, people hate esports because it's contradictory to what they want in a game. Because of the fundamental conflicts between the ideal casual experience versus the ideal competitive experience, games cannot produce a product which attempts to mix the two experiences. Criticism is happening now because game developers fail to realize that conflict and produce games in spite of it, and no, esports as a concept is not, or was not, and will never be problematic. To wrap everything in a more digestible format, esports is not inherently bad in gaming, and does not cause the industry's current problems. Instead, multiplayer games suffer when corporations don't recognize the foundational conflicts of competitive versus casual gaming, and don't work to try and create separate experiences for both scenes. So, that's the short answer. If you want the long answer, or if you think I'm wrong, you're gonna have to watch the rest of the video. Before we embark on our lovely journey, I would like to take a moment to ask you to support the channel. I work really hard to make sure these videos are the best that they can be. Any support that you guys give me, whether through subscribing, liking, or sharing with your peers, means a lot to me. You don't have to, of course, but every bit of support you guys give me motivates me to continue making these videos. Whether you choose to support me or not, I still thank you for taking the time to check out this video. Anyways, we've got an important video on our hands. Let's not waste any more time and get straight into this. Before we start talking about anything important, I must introduce the key concept of this entire discussion. If you've watched my previous video on if Overwatch can recover, you'll be familiar with what I'm going to talk about. Watching that video isn't a prerequisite for watching this video, but it does show how a concept that I'll introduce here connects with Overwatch. Before I describe the concept in full, I would first like you to put yourself into the shoes of an ideal casual player. What do you, as this player, want from a game? The answer is simple. You would want your game to be fun. It can come in any form or mode of expression, but the main point is that you want to have fun. As this player, anything that restricts or limits the amount of fun that can be had is unequivocally bad. You, as an ideal casual player, only care about how much fun a game gives you. Now, switch perspectives and put yourself into the shoes of an ideal competitive player. What do you want now? Well, obviously, you still want to have fun, but there's probably more that you'd want. Fun, for you, now doesn't just mean playing the game. It means using the tools which the game provides to compete against other competitive players. Part of how you have fun means learning how those tools work to beat those other players. So, your funness is split between playing the game, but also being better than better. other people. With this in mind, you, as a competitive player, want to ensure that the experience is fun, but also fair. You wouldn't want one player to have an inherent advantage over every other player player because that would ruin the entire purpose of competition. That sign of fun for you wouldn't exist anymore. Some characters, items, maps, whatever, will have to be changed to maintain the integrity of competition. As a consequence, the experience for some players may be compromised. So this will ruffle some feathers. You, as a competitive player, understand that this is for the net benefit of the entire competitive scene. What I've hopefully described is the inherent conflict between the casual and competitive experiences. An ideal casual player wouldn't see the net benefit of a game being balanced because they don't care about that side of the game. Balance, to them, is a minor consideration which, at best, changes the gameplay experience and, at worst, makes their favorite <laughs> character, ability, map, item, whatever, less fun. This conflict is what I would like to describe as the casual competitive dichotomy, or CCD. For a formal definition, the CCD is the inability
ability for a game to perfectly fulfill the desires of casual and or competitive players at the same time. The best example I like to use for this is Overwatch. I'm going to summarize what I said in my last video a bit here, so watch that video if you want a fuller explanation. Basically, Overwatch was conceived as a casual game which was molded, designed, and marketed as a competitive game, but balancing decisions were still largely influenced by the casual scene. Blizzard wanted to make a game which could tap into both casual and competitive markets. In the end, and for several other reasons, both parties were unsatisfied with the product. Competitive players thought the game was too casual, casual players thought the game was too competitive, and everyone was justifiably pissed off. With that being said, how did the CCD impact the gaming scene as a whole? Simply put, companies don't recognize that not every game has to be a competitive experience. Game developers don't care about that, and transform games which have no business being related to esports into competitive titles. This is a tale which has occurred time and time again. If you pay attention, the games which fall victim to ignoring the CCD are always the games that people complain about. In the hero genre, genre there's Overwatch and TF2. I've already gone into depth about why Overwatch suffered, so I won't explain it here. For TF2, they decided to introduce a competitive mode into a definitive casual game with the Meet Your Match update. This understandably frustrated the casual scene since the game was never treated like a competitive experience before that update. There is, I believe, a lot more factors which ruined TF2 than just the introduction of competition. While I do believe that it was a step in the wrong direction, Valve's lack of care for the game as a whole is what really ruined the game. Moving on to other genres of multiplayer games, arena shooters and battle royales. This includes games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, Fortnite, and Apex Legends. These games were developed with distinctly casual experiences in mind. Over time, more competitive elements were added to them. You can finish the rest of the story from there. There are, however, some key things that I want to reference. Firstly, and this is purely within opinionville here, I don't believe that these types of games really work for esports. I think that these games are suited infinitely better for casual play. This is just what I believe, so you're welcome to disagree with me. Secondly, Fortnite has seen a recent recovery campaign because they, I believe, decided to pivot away from esports. The introduction of custom games, amazing in-game events, and several collabs have all dramatically improved the game's reputation. None of this would have been possible if Epic Games continued to go down the route of forcing esports on a casual game. Finally, the other games which I've mentioned have had other things outside of the competitive scene which has tarnished their reputation. Call of Duty is developed by Activision, a partner company to Blizzard. Unless you've been living under a rock, Activision Blizzard has seen 400 billion controversies over the past few years. These controversies have had a noticeable impact on the reputation of all Activision Blizzard games, including Call of Duty. A similar story can be painted for Battlefield and Apex Legends, both games being developed by Electronic Arts or EA. <laughs> Those were the games that had suffered because of the casual competitive dichotomy. There are two major takeaways from these examples. One, all of these games weren't designed to be competitive, and two, there were other factors related specifically to developers which ruined the game. For pretty much every single one of these examples, it was never just the game company listened to competitive players and so the game became bad. There was always something more to the story, and it was almost always the fault of the game developer. With all of this in mind, you may be asking the question, have there been any successful competitive games? If there aren't any, then that would mean that esports cannot be a good thing. Right? Well, I would like to highlight the numerous successful examples of esports focused games. To run quickly through a list, we have the tactical shooters, games like Counter Strike, Valorant, and Rainbow Six Siege. These games were designed from the ground up with competition in mind. Thus, they are, mostly, perfectly optimized to satisfy the competitive itch. Each one of these games continue to support active scenes. If the developers continue to emphasize balancing these games with care and consideration, I believe that they will continue to be mainstays in the industry for years to come. Up next, we have have MOBAs, specifically League of Legends and Dota 2. Though these games may not be perfect, it's undeniable how popular they've remained over the course of gaming history. I believe that these games would not be able to maintain this level of popularity without the involvement of esports. Despite them being developed for competition, casual players from across the globe can still play them regularly. Next we have traditional fighting games. Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Tekken, Guilty Gear, Random Anime Fighting Game number 5021. I don't really know, I don't play fighting games. For this genre, of game, we simply have to look at EVO Las Vegas 2024. It was the largest fighting game event in history and it happened a couple of weeks ago. People are clearly interested in fighting games and both the casual and competitive scene are expected to continue growing. This discussion so far has ignored one crucial detail. Games are required to have a casual community. Casual players are the best form of profit generation and free advertising. Without them, every game would fail to be successful long term. So, wouldn't it be contradictory for a company to cater to 
competitive players who won't be as much of a monetary contributor? Well, not necessarily. You see, the casual competitive dichotomy only indicates that the ideal casual slash competitive player would want something different from a product. It doesn't state, however, that it's impossible for a casual fan base to grow from a competitive game. A game company can grow a healthy casual scene in their competitive game by 1. Making the game accessible and easy to understand. 2. Creating a separate, casual focused experience which is distinct from the core competitive game modes. And 3. Which is most important of all, make the game good. Through those three actions, competitive games can foster a happy and active casual scene without conflicting with the CCD. Those actions lead into the major takeaway from this discussion. Esports aren't the exclusive factor which is ruining gaming. How esports is harmful is not through its sheer existence, but rather through companies forcing it into every modern multiplayer game. Competitive experiences are replacing casual experiences, and that forces casual players to either choose to follow along with something they don't care about, or leave the multiplayer scene altogether. This is, in my opinion, an avoidable outcome. The games which get produced should reflect the desires of the consumers. If companies can recognize the inherent conflict between casual and competitive scenes, they can develop games to satisfy both parties independently. Through this, I think that the magic of gaming can once again be restored. That's the video! If you enjoyed this video and would like to see others like it in the future, please be sure to like the video and subscribe. Every little bit of support you guys give me means a lot. Unfortunately, this will probably be the last big video I release for some time. Don't worry though, I will return with a vengeance when the time comes. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you next time. So long, friends!